Hey everyone, it's Connor here again, and welcome to what may very well be the final update of this saga. So this is the dead skin case again. What we have in the little tube here is just the, one of the little globules of, of dead skin that I harvested from the, from the patient in the previous video. So dead skin in the little sample container. And then what I've done here, so you can see this kind of glass microscope slide kind of balance there. What I've done is I've tried my best to put a little kind of blob of that dead skin on the microscope slide and basically kind of smear it like pate very thinly across the microscope slide. So it's not perfect, but I don't have, you know, good lab equipment. So I've really just used another microscope slide to smear this dead skin across the microscope slide. And the liquid that you see there is potassium hydroxide. So you might know it as something different. You might know it as lye or caustic potash. But what's going to happen is the potassium hydroxide, this is also called a KOH test, K being the chemical symbol for potassium. The potassium hydroxide is going to basically dissolve and kind of melt away um, all of the dead skin if it's thin enough on, on the microscope slide and it's going to leave behind other stuff. So this is the view through the microscope. Now I, I might, I, I'll just pause it here so I can explain what you're looking at. The background of the microscope slide is white, right? So, you, you know, anything else that's on the white background is stuff on the slide. Now what you can see here basically is just a mess. So this is a part of the slide which contains a lot of, still a lot of dead skin debris, right? So the potassium hydroxide, it, this dead skin on this part of the microscope slide is, has been spread too thickly for the potassium hydroxide to clear it. And yet, can you see anything in this image? So on the right hand side, can you see those kind of like filaments? They look like little hairs. What is that? Let's take a closer look. So. Um, at the beginning of this examination, I, I just looked at the, the, the thicker parts of the slide just to see if I could see anything. Again, more dead skin here. And ju just to explain, it doesn't look, it, it looks kind of bluish or um, kind of greeny tinged just because of that, by virtue of the method of illumination I'm using. But uh, again, here you can kind of see these little filaments. Now, because I already know what's on the slide, it's really super obvious to me what I'm looking at, but you will also, uh, it will also become obvious to you by the end of the video and, th and then you can rewind and then see what I'm seeing. But um, it's kind of like a puzzle or like one of those magic pictures. Like once you know what you're looking for, you know the answer, it becomes really obvious and you can see it. So again, more dead skin. This really doesn't look like much. Again, little kind of hair there. I wonder what that is. Hmm. This is just thick dead skin on the microscope. So this is where I didn't you know, slide firmly enough. So this is kind of caked on the slide where the potassium hydroxide hasn't dissolved anything. But we will get to a thinner uh, smear and you'll see that the slide suddenly becomes very clear and you'll see what's left behind. So all dead skin, all dead skin. And <clears throat> if we move just to the right, we'll start to see um, the debris clear and we'll start to see, well, there it is. So there we go. This is a section of the microscope slide where I was able to smear it thinly enough such that the potassium hydroxide has dissolved all of this, the dead skin. And we're left with these, what look like sort of, you know, thin filaments or hairs, but they're not hairs. This is fungus. Okay, now here, there is a very good example. So you see on the left-hand side of the image, see this kind of like, it almost looks like kind of roots of a tree or branches of a tree kind of projecting out in these kind of V shapes. So that is typical of a type of fungus called Aspergillus, which is not a surprise. I mean, that's Aspergillus is known for uh, causing otomycosis, which is a fungal ear infection. But um, it often it's often described as branching out in these V like projections. So here's just a closer look. Um, at, at the hyphae. This is what we call the hyphae of the fungus. So these kind of fine filaments. Um, and again, you, you can kind of see it broken apart into segments. That's probably for two reasons. First is it's probably because I was too, you know, I didn't really smear it that nicely across the microscope slide. So I probably broke, you know, mechanically broke a lot of the, the hyphae. But also I probably left the um, potassium hydroxide on for too long. But also, the, the hyphae of Aspergillus, I think, is kind of 
segmented. Um, so it's all joined together, obviously, but it's in, it's in like these segments. So I think that's probably why a lot of the hyphae is broken up into these segments. But it, I mean, as you can see, it's just, it's just frigging everywhere. Um, so now that, so what the potassium hydroxide has done is it's, so look at that. I mean, it's just, you can see it almost looks nice, really, doesn't it? Just the, the beauty of this fungus showing up on the microscope slides, quite extraordinary. So really what the, I mean, look at that. That's just, it looks like the crest of Gondor. It's absolutely spectacular. Look at the, the just the sheer network of fungus that has now arisen because we've been able to see through the debris. The potassium hydroxide has allowed us to see through and what's, it's, exposed what is hiding underneath. So I'm just going to pause here. So this is a part of the slide again that was thick. Okay, so the potassium hydroxide hasn't managed to clear all of the dead skin debris, the, the epithelium, right, the human tissue. But can you see any fungus lurking there? I bet you can now. So you can see it is there. It's lurking underneath or in the dead skin. It's just you couldn't see it before because you didn't know what you were looking for. But now I bet you can see hyphae there. So it's very, very clear, isn't it? And I mean, it's just, it's, it's all throughout this dead skin. It's, it's like in this very cool network. Um, now, I mean, I have to mention that it, having fungus on your body is totally normal. There's fungus on me, there's probably fungus on you, right? So we've got that going for us, which is nice. But the point is, you know, it's, it's quite normal. So here again, you can see hyphae hiding within the debris. It's quite normal, but what makes me suspicious in this case is just that the amount of hyphae that's showing up on the slide, it's quite a lot. And, um, so I, I think, I rather suspect that, the, that this is a fungal infection and that's what's causing the rapid desquamation. So again, this is a very nice shot. Just look at that hyphae just kind of branching out like a tree. So we would, we'd have, we would have never been able to see this had we not applied the chemicals. The chemical, I should say. So this is a very easy test to do, really. Again, the, the, the thick greeny blue stuff is where it's just like I've just not put any effort in basically and it's just like caked onto the slide. But again, look at the network. It's just absolutely extraordinary. Just the, the vastness of this hyphae. Again, moving across a, a slightly thicker area of the slide here. So, and again, once we're past the, the, the thick part of the slide, again, the hyphae shows up. So what is the conclusion to this video. So, um, you know, once I saw this, I had a good look, obviously, and um, called the patient and I said, well, this is what I found. This is what I think is occurring. Uh, and shall I just call your general practitioner doctor and have a conversation rather than wait for ENT? Because at, at this point, again, the patient has not even heard from ENT yet. So, uh, I called the general practitioner doctor, had a good conversation with them and described what I saw through the microscope. And the current tactic now is to try some antifungal drops. So will that work? Possibly. I mean, he's tried that before, right? So um, I'm not entirely sure whether that's going to work, but hey, it's, something is better than nothing, right? We, you know, we might as well try something because you know, I have rather suspect that when the patient does get a letter through from his local ENT department, again, just, just, you know, look at that structure there. It's extraordinary. Again, broken up into segments. But again, I could only get hold of 10% potassium hydroxide. So I didn't really know how long to leave it on the slide. Usually this test is done with 20% potassium hydroxide, but I just, I just kind of winged it really. Um, so I rather suspect that when the patient does get a letter from ENT, it's, you know, the appointment is going to be for, I don't know, months, months into the future. Um, and this can't really continue for much longer. Um, I mean, he can continue coming to see me and I can just routinely, you know, suction out his ears. But really, you know, by suctioning out his ears, I'm not really, I'm just treating the symptom. I'm not, we're not really treating the cause. 
So again, lovely, lovely looking hyphae there. So, you know, we're, we're going to try these antifungal drops. I guess that will probably mean maybe this isn't the end um, of this case. We'll, we'll have to see if these antifungal drops work. Um, if they don't work, I imagine probably what ENT will do, as has been uh, suggested before by an ENT doctor on Reddit, is that he may have to have this kind of concoction of antifungal uh, steroid uh, cream and anti, you know, antibacterial kind of ointment concoction um, kind of injected into his ear canal f so it's totally filling the ear canal um, and then that will stay there for an extended period of time hopefully just to kind of have a more thorough effect at killing the fungus but um, for those of you who have actually had a, a fungal infection such as ringworm you probably know that it is, to, it is sometimes very difficult to treat, right? You have to keep on applying the sodding cream over and over and over again. And sometimes even when the, the symptoms clear up, the fungus can still kind of lurk there, right? So there we go. That is the update so far in this saga. I hope you found this interesting. Um, now, if there are any doctors, lab techs, scientists, nurses, anyone who knows more about this, about this fungus, please leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, let me know what you think about the KOH test and the results. And let me know if you have any recommendations for this patient. But thank you very much for watching. Um, I will uh, update you next time I have an update. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you on the next video.